Now, I'm not here today to talk to you guys about how I had the worst childhood in the world because I didn't. I've suffered quite a bit of abuse, physical, emotional, amongst others, but how I always justified that was that I was fed or that at least I had a roof over my head. I looked at the lives of other people that were less fortunate than I was and I thought to myself, well, things could always be worse. If I complain about it, I might have my food privileges taken away from me. My mother, when I was five years old, locked me outside at 3 a.m. in the morning, in the pitch black of night, and she told me that she called people to come take me away because I had misbehaved. So if I stayed quiet, if I behaved, I would still have a home. Now, honestly, I'm not sure if this is due to the potential impending loss of everything I had as a child, but when other kids in school talked about various different things that they wanted, it consisted of things like action figures, like Pokemon cards, like Game Boy games. All I wanted personally was to not have this overwhelming feeling that at any moment, I would have nothing. This left me unable to really connect with other people. They were happy, they had loving families, or at least the illusion of a loving family. In retrospect, I guess it's impossible to really know, you never do. I walked on eggshells. I avoided having friends come over because I didn't want them to see the kind of life that I led. I was ashamed, I was embarrassed, I could pretend to be normal at school, but I couldn't at home, not around my family. Again, this left me disconnected from people my age. I didn't spend nights over at friends' places, they never spent time over at mine. I fell into this pit of despair. I was secluded from friends. I faked all of the interactions that I had at school. I genuinely dreaded going home. What would there be waiting for me? Would my sisters, Wiggy's dad, my stepdad, hold me down and beat me again? Would my mother starve me for another night? There had to be more to life than this, right? Would I ever even get to experience it, or was this my life? That is pretty much what went through my head from the age of seven all the way until 10. At the age of nine, 23 years ago in 1998, I watched a commercial for Sony's newest gaming console, the PlayStation. I had not played video games before. I had no understanding of what they were, and I couldn't have even begun to fathom the inconceivable impact that it would have on my life moving forward. All I knew was that I wanted one. I wasn't in a position where I could simply ask my parents for one. My family were trailer trash. Wiggy's father was an abusive, drug-addicted alcoholic. I know, winning combination, right? My mother, she, uh, she sure knew how to pick them. Thankfully, both my parents channeled all of that rage, all of that hatred into me, not into my sister Wiggy. So, I sat down one afternoon and I contemplated how I wanted to go about obtaining one. Unfortunately, at the time, my nine-year-old mind was not capable of coming up with anything reasonable. However, a few weeks later, my neighbor asked if I could help him move some stuff. He was an older gent, a really nice guy that I would pass on the way home from school sometimes. I wasn't a bad kid, so naturally I had no issue helping him out. This was admittedly an excuse to keep me from having to go home, having to go back to what I could only perceive hell to be. After spending approximately two hours helping him rearrange one of the rooms in his home, moving stuff into the shed that he had out back, he gave me $20. I was nine years old and I just made my first $20. I was ecstatic and the first thing that entered my mind, interestingly enough, wasn't that I could save this to eventually purchase a PS1. No, on the contrary, my very first thought was that if my mother threatened to not feed my sister and I, that I would have the money to go out and get food myself, that I would not have to rely on her. It wasn't until days later that I, I really fully processed what had happened and what this meant. For the next couple months, I went around to our neighbors offering my services for anything they could spare. I went to local gas stations and offered to restock their entire shelves for them for as little as a dollar an hour. I didn't care. I had no friends, I had no social life, I had infinite time and a willingness to dedicate all of it to making enough money to purchase that PS1. 
that was a goal that I had set months earlier and obtaining it was finally within my grasp. All the while, my parents had absolutely no idea what I was doing behind their backs. They didn't care. As long as I was home, as long as they could physically see me, they were content. Satisfied with the knowledge that I was alive and that they wouldn't have to deal with Child Protective Services. Over the next few months, I would spend hours every day after school mowing lawns, stocking shelves, walking dogs, doing the work that other adults did not want to do. All the while, hiding every cent I made in a small bag that I had hidden away behind a shelf in my room. And I know what you're thinking, why would you go about hiding your money? And that is because my aunt, my grandparents, occasionally they would feel generous enough and they would send me $20 for my birthday. I never received that. My mother used it to pay bills, to buy food, or at least that's the excuse that she gave me every month she came home with freshly painted nails. So I hid my money. I worked hard for this and I refused to let someone else take this and use it for their own selfish gains. So fast forward several months and I had saved enough money to purchase the console that I had been dreaming of for what seemed like an eternity. I was 10 years old at this juncture, too young to go into town on my own, but if I asked my parents to take me, I'd receive one of two different responses. They'd question what I needed and how I was capable of obtaining what I needed, or they'd just outright say no. Neither of those outcomes were acceptable to me. So I went next door and I asked the old man that gave me my first $20 if he would give me a lift into town. He had no problem with that. He didn't even ask me what I needed. I guess he felt sorry for me now that I look back. He could hear the kinds of arguments that my mother and my stepfather would get into. He'd hear the kinds of things that they'd do to me, the things that they'd call me. Poor guy, I, I, I genuinely feel bad that he no doubt bore witness to some of that and given how friendly he always was, likely felt like there was nothing he could do. He took me into town directly to the store that I needed and he asked me if there was anything he could do. I handed him everything I'd saved up at that point and I asked him if he could purchase the PS1 for me since I was young and they might not sell it to me. I wasn't aware if there was some kind of age requirement attached to the purchase of a console at that age. He proceeded to just laugh and agree. He purchased it for me. It actually ended up being a little more expensive due to the fact that I also had a game purchased with it. I didn't factor that in when initially saving up for this, but he was more than happy making up that difference. He handed it to me and he drove me back to his place. He knew better than to drop me off at my place as my parents would begin questioning me as to what was going on, and that was a conversation that I definitely did not want to have. I snuck in through the back door that I left open after making certain that they were both in the living room watching the TV. They'd spend every evening watching the TV from approximately 6 to 8 p.m. Otherwise, they'd be outside smoking, doing whatever they did. I, I tend not to really think about it. I had to reel in and contain my excitement at this juncture. I, I couldn't just go and hook up my PS1 to the TV, so I waited until they were done with their shows and went outside. Immediately, I ran over to the TV, I hooked up my PS1, and I booted up the first game that I ever purchased. Resident Evil. My parents would stay outside until after midnight, so I knew I had plenty of time to play this game, and I lost myself in it. I, I stayed up all night playing it, being horrified with it. I couldn't sleep that night. I tried, but my excitement was just immeasurable. When I did finally fall asleep, I had nightmares. In retrospect, Resident Evil probably wasn't the best pick in terms of a, a video game to play for the first time at that age, at midnight, all by myself. Eventually, my parents learned that I had somehow gotten my hands on the console, but much like me at the time, had no idea what it was. I lied, telling them that it was something I borrowed from a friend. That way they would be less inclined to take it away from me or worse, sell it. Thinking back, this was probably the, the defining moment that started me, that set me on this journey to pursue a career in YouTube. If I had never had these experiences, then I would never have lost myself in gaming and it would have ultimately led me down a very different path. I would continue to replay Resident Evil repeatedly as that was the only game that I had access to at the time. Over the next year, I would slowly begin to amass other games. Final Fantasy VIII, The Legend of Dragoon, Breath of Fire. Little by little, month after month, year after year, I would continue to descend further down the rabbit hole that is the gaming 
genre. Playing video games became an escape from reality for me. I was transported from my world, a world filled with abuse of all types, a world where I was weak, where I had no friends, where I had no real purpose, into a world where I could grow into something more powerful, something that had friends, something that had a purpose. This was all I wanted. I wanted to be normal, but a, a sense of normalcy was never an option for me. With the exception of doing jobs around the neighborhood to fund the acquisition of new games, I became a recluse. I stopped going outside. I stopped talking to my family. I spent every second I could glued to that tiny TV, enthralled with all of these incredible worlds that I could only dream were my own. This became my life for years, until my mother left Wiggy's father. We would proceed to then leave the state that we had lived in, and ended up in a neighborhood of, uh, well, unsavory people would be a, a very nice way of classifying them. I could no longer afford to purchase new video games. My mother didn't work and instead lived off of the government. That was it. That would be my final adventure. I was 15 years old now. My mother was no longer capable of physically abusing me to the degree that she once did. She could try, and even despite her attempts, I refused to give her the satisfaction of reacting. But, and you know what, I, I, I know that this is a bit dark, so I apologize in advance, but I was at a point in my life where I genuinely felt like there was nothing left for me, and that there was no escaping this because I no longer had an escape from reality. I no longer had an outlet. I was stuck reliving this hell every day until one day at school, I saw someone playing a video game on one of the school PCs over a LAN. I was fascinated. I didn't know you could do that, I thought. This left me with the same idea I had when I was younger. Do whatever was necessary for whomsoever needed it. So I could afford a PC to no avail, unfortunately. I looked for weeks, for what seemed like months, but I had no luck. Everyone was either too poor themselves or outright refused to pay for help. Until one day, I saw a pamphlet from a new internet service provider in the area. They were offering free laptops, lower end laptops, granted, but a laptop nonetheless, for people that signed up for three year contracts for a bundle of both internet and phone service. I managed to convince my mother into signing up as I told her that it was a deal much better than what we currently had. And in all honesty, they did have cheaper prices, so it wasn't a bad deal at all. After a couple weeks, I got a laptop. I had an internet connection and that was when I learned that there were video games you could play online completely free. This left me speechless. I had no idea that this was even possible. I didn't know that you could play games over the internet, let alone with other players. I thought LAN parties were the only types of multiplayer available to PC gamers. And this is when I downloaded my first MMORPG, Tales of Pirates. Once more, I was met with an escape from reality, one that I absolutely needed. Without this escape, I dare not even imagine what I would have done or what would have happened to me. Tales of Pirates was an MMO that I dedicated two years of my life to. It was different to playing a single player RPG. Instead of playing as a, as a hero with a preset personality and a linear story out of my control, I could play as myself, I could create my own legend. And that is what kept me playing for two years. I did everything I could. I participated in dungeons, I participated in raids, I, I engaged other players in PvP, I fought for my friends, I fought for my guild. We built a community of players that would all work together towards a common goal. This was a sense of camaraderie that I'd never had outside of video games that lifted my spirits and left me coming back every single day for more. It became more than an escape from reality for me, it became my reality. I devoted every fiber of my being to that game for two whole years, and I don't regret a single second of it. While I would continue to move from MMO to MMO over the next stage of my life, I would find ways of making every new experience, every new game special, important. Now, a lot of people view video games as a well, as a, a hobby, a pastime, something to, to play when they're bored. But for some of us, it's so much more. Without video games, I never would have survived my childhood. I was in a bad state mentally, physically, emotionally. Things that happened to me that no child should have to go through, ever. To me, 
gaming is my life. It has done so much for me and opened doors for me that I would never have expected. If it wasn't for the MMO Terra, I never would have met my wife, Mrs. Styx. And if it wasn't for this genre, I never would have met all of the incredible people, you guys in specific, watching this. This genre is important to me. It saved my life. And I love that I get to dedicate that life now to reaching other people who might be in similar circumstances as I was once in. I guess the reason I wanted to do this video is because I wanted people to know that video games do have an impact. They definitely had an impact on my life. Who knows what someone might be going through when they play, when they connect with a video game. It might be just what they need. I know this ended up a little more serious than videos I typically make, but now you've had a, a small peek into what got me here, what led me to creating a channel dedicated to video games. And I hope for those of you that can relate to this video, you yourself can find an escape, can find an outlet with which to channel yourself. You need it. We all need it. And hopefully one day you manage to reach a point in your life where you are as happy as I am now. You'll get there, don't worry. Thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. Each and every one of you are absolutely incredible human beings that deserve everything you want in life and more. 